Okay, so fifth lecture, we're going to talk about product topology, but this is 2.0. Okay, so at the very beginning, we know like <laughs> this is like the product of the topological space, and we know that, and we define like for a finite product, the bases are like form of like this, where each ui is open in xi. Okay. And and when we are considering the infinite product, right, the basis of this form, like u1 times u2, where each u i open in xi, for all these bases like this, the topology <coughs> generated is called a box topology. Okay, so we're taking the basis approach. What if, if we're taking the sub basis approach, right? So like the, the sub basis elements are all like like this, right? Remember back in um product topology, right? Somewhere here, right? We defined a <coughs> like this. The sub basis for so now we define the sub basis approach, which is like this, where each open set UI Right, and we define their inverse projection, right? And this, all such sets, form the sub basis, and the topology generated by this sub basis is called the product topology. Well, what is the difference though? What are the difference between them? Well, first, we look at the basis elements first. For the product topology, we know that there are like finite intersections of this, right? Well, I'll say for i equal to i1 to i k, right? So this is a basis element in product topology. And for x and b, we know that pi i of x is in ui for this. And note, there's no restrictions for values other than i1 to i k. Right, so for other for other like coordinates, it can be like in the entire space x alpha, right? And it is easy to see that in the finite product, they're the same, they're the same uh, topology. But when we're in the infinite product, then the story is different. So. We have done our like motivation discussion and then we're gonna do some definitions, okay? So a J tuple is basically some form of elements like this where F L X alpha, H alpha is in J, J is an index set, right? And we define the Cartesian product, it's like this, right? So each element each element is x such that x alpha is in a alpha okay and <clears throat> we have a top family of topological spaces and for this for the topology of this we take the collection of all sets of form like this where u alpha is open in x alpha so something like this the collection of all sets like this and the topology generated by this basis is called the box topology. So first we have to verify it is a basis, right? Well, first we note that this is a basis element, so we're good. And second, the intersection of any two basis element is again a basis element. So, right, this is, this is easy to verify and I will skip it. Okay, let's keep going. And then we generalize, generalize the sub-basis formulation of the definition. So we let pi beta to be the projection map, okay? And it's basically, you can have x alpha, alpha is in j, which is like a tuple, and pi beta gives the beta's coordinate. The beta coordinate is a projection mapping. Okay. 
Well, okay. Now, will that S B denote the collection? S B. <laughs> will that S B denote the collection for all like this, right? So the collection of all inverse image where u beta is open at x beta. And then we have the, this is like the inverse image of u beta under the projection map. And we let s denote the set of all sb. <laughs> so, so the topology generated by this subbasis s is called a product topology. So in this topology, this product is called a product space. <laughs> okay. So let's okay. We have the definition right, but this definition looks fairly like uh looks a bit abstract, right? So let's just do some research on the basis elements. Okay, so so we consider a particular basis element B. So B. Like it is a intersection of elements and S, right? Well, if we're intersecting elements belong to the same space, which is like if you're intersecting two elements from a particular SB, right? Then we have this intersecting with this. Well, this by uh, by the property of inverse map is equal to this, but this thing inside is op op open in X B, which is belong to S B, right? This is open in the uh, space, so which means that this is an S B by definition. Well, if it's on the if it's the same space, we take your intersection. It is still in the. Uh, and the, the, the SB, right? Which is nothing new. Nothing interesting happening. But what if we're diff, uh, intersecting different spaces? Well, now things get more interesting, right? So we let beta 1 into beta n belongs to the index at j. We let them be distinct and let them be finite, right? So we're each ubi open in xbi. And then we take the intersection now. Their intersection is going to be like this, right? Okay, so this is a typical basis element. Well, so which means that if x is in B, right? If x is in B, then its B one coordinate should be in B one, U B one. Its B beta two coordinate should be in U beta two, and by this reasoning its beta nth coordinate should be in u beta n. Well, for alpha th coordinate that is not equal to any bi, what could it be? It could be anything, right? It, it could be anything. There's no restriction, which means that x is in the product of u alpha or alpha u j and some restriction. And the restriction is that the u alpha is not equal, equal to the entire space for only those alpha right right so now we have a comparison the box and product topology so first the box has all bases of the form this where alpha u alpha and x alpha right and the product topology has a basis of all sets of the form this <coughs> where each u alpha open an x alpha for each alpha and it is equal to the entire space except for finally many values so it could be zero it could be zero zero is fine right so the remark is that as a finite product you can easily tell that they are the same topology right but in the infinite product we see that the product topology is coarser than the box topology box topology is finer Okay, but finer doesn't necessarily mean like it's better, right? So we prefer using the product topology and it has better properties and we'll see why, okay? So we have to make our convention. 
Whenever we're considered a product, we shall assume it's given a product topology unless we specifically state otherwise. So we're going to focus on <coughs> the product topology. Now here's a proof of the theorem. Here's a theorem and I omit the proof because the proof is nothing hard. It's just like set theory, you just verify, you use definitions, right? So <coughs> you can take a look and um, keep going. So this, so we have F from a set A to the product space, right? Where it's defined like this. So it has like coordinate functions, okay? It has coordinate function. So this is from A to X alpha for each alpha. And this big function is continuous if and only if this alpha is continuous. Okay, so before we uh, go to the proof, we're gonna think, define a thing that's called a projection map. So U beta's projection map from to beta's coordinate. And we know that this projection map is continuous. Why? Because for U beta open at X beta, this is a, a sub basis element, which means that it is open. Right, which means that it is open. So for u beta open x beta, this is open, right? <laughs> so this direction, we know the coordinate function is basically the composition of u beta and f. And this is continuous, this is continuous, so the composition is continuous. And for this direction, suppose that each coordinate function is continuous. And you want to prove that f is continuous. So first, we want to show that the inverse image under every subbasis element is open. Then we know that for basis elements, right, f inverse image of beta, which is equal to this, right? And if each sub basis element this is open, then this is open, which means that this is open. And for u equal open set, it can be expressed as a union of basis elements and the union of inverse image, like, you know, and again open. So to prove that f is continuous, we only have to consider when this is open for any sub basis element. Okay? So now, we consider a particular subbasis element, right? Where beta is in the index set. Then we take their <coughs> inverse image under F, right? We take their inverse image under F, which is equal to the inverse image of F beta because we have this is true. And this can be verified easily by the elementary set theory. Now, we know that this is continuous, right? If this is continuous, which means that this is open, right? So yeah, this is open. And if this is open in A, this is also open in A. So this is open in A, but this is a basis element, right? Which means that for any basis element, the inverse image of F is open A, so F is continuous. Okay, and many of you guys might <coughs> consider um, why are we using product topology. So here is a nice example. Okay, so we consider R omega is a countably <coughs> infinite product of the real number with itself, and we recall that what is R omega? It's basically you know the product of xn, where xn is the real number. And we define the equation, uh, we define the function like this. Okay? And each coordinate is continuous, right? Each coordinate is continuous because constant function is continuous. So the function f is continuous if f is given the product topology. 
but it is not continuous within the box topology. Why? Because mm, it, is uh, it is continuous in the product topology because we just proved it, right? Now, if it's given a box topology, so we consider a basis element like this, okay? And we wish to show that this is not open, okay? So we assume for a contradiction such that if this is open, then it will contain some interval about the point zero. Like, why, why is this even possible, right? Because suppose that, okay, this element is like other than zero, some some interval like this, or interval like, or interval like this, into infinity. It doesn't matter. But if it's if it does not contain zero, if the open interval does not contain zero, then we know that this is true, right? By analysis, then we know that. This is a a is greater than zero, right? We have this is true. Then, for any x in the inverse image, we know that. Um, for any x in the inverse image, right? For any x here, we know that there exists n such that. This. It's not in this, right? Because we can find some one over n like this, right? So for any any element, we can find something like this, right? For any n, which means that if this is true, then f of x is not even in b, right? So it's a contradiction. So f x is not even in b anymore, because f and x is not in this for all the n greater than the capital N, right? It is a constant function, so, so, so this is true, right? Okay, so this is justified, and this will mean that this is in B, right? Because um, this set is a subset of this, right? So this should be in B. Now we apply pi to the n, okay? We apply pi to the n to both sides of the inclusion. So we have this <coughs> is basically um, this, yes. This is basically this and we know that the inclusion of b for the nth coordinate is this. So this means that we have a fixed delta, but it's in all such neighborhood for all n, which is a contradiction. So this is not open. This is not open. OK? So the box topology doesn't have a good property like this, basically by uh, like analysis. OK? So here, we just conclude our product topology section. And for next, we're going to focus on the metric topology.